murder in the first degree. Premeditated homicide is the most serious charge tried in our criminal courts. You have heard a long and complex case, ladies, and now it is your duty to sit down and try to separate the facts from the fancy. One man is dead. The life of another is at stake. If there is a reasonable doubt in your minds as to the guilty of the accused, then you must declare him not guilty. However, there is no reasonable doubt. You must be found. For when you decide, the verdict must be unanimous. I urge you to deliver it honestly and honestly. You are faced with a grave responsibility. The jury will retire. He is the same. Can anyone hear me? Is my audio on? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. You know something? I know lots of things. I'm in advertising. Oh, uh, you know, it's freezing in here. Well, it's so hot in here, it's boiling. I haven't noticed. I've been inside all day. All I've done all day is perspire. Stop perspiring like a boy, you would cry. Well, thank God I have my mini space heater. My AC has been going haywire. I would have died if I had to do quarantine without it. My taxes are high enough. This should go fast anyway. Yes, I agree. It's cold over here as well. All right, ladies, everyone's here. Just a reminder, for legal reasons, we are recording this session. If there's anything you want, I'm surveilling the chat. So just send a message and I will do my part to help out. Did he just leave? No, not really. Uh, his camera is just temporarily disabled. What do they think we are? Crooks? They keep us online for a little while. And then they lock up that boy forever. And that's all right with me. I never knew they did that. Sure, the guard doesn't participate. What'd you think? I just didn't know. It never occurred to me. Shall we all admit right now that this is weird, and we're tired, and our tempers are running short? I mean, it has been a pretty hard week. I feel fine so long as I got my knitting. I wonder what's been going down at the office. You know how it is in advertising. Because of this quarantine, my job could be gone, and the whole company too. They aren't going to like this. Well, I think this is our duty. I didn't object to doing my duty. I just said that I might not have a job by quarantine is over. Ask her to help. She's rich. I bet her husband can give you a wonderful job. Just look at that outfit. Is it an original? Yes, it is. I have an aunt who makes dresses. Oh, how does she do? Not too well. You know, a friend of hers that's a friend of my aunt, the dressmaker. Well, this friend wanted to be on this jury in my place. Why didn't you let her? I'd have done anything to miss this. And get caught or something? You know what kind of fine you could pay for a thing like that? Anyway, this friend of my aunt's was on a jury once, about 10 years ago, a case just about like this one. So what happened? They let him off, reasonable doubt. And do you know, about eight years later, they found out they actually done it. Anyway, a guilty man, a murderer, was let loose on the streets. How horrible. Did they get him? They couldn't. Why not? No one can be held in double jeopardy, unless it's a hung jury. They can't try anyone twice for the same crime. Well, that isn't going to happen here. Six days. They should have finished in two. Talk, talk, talk. Did you ever hear so much talk about nothing? Well, I guess they're entitled. Everybody gets a fair trial. That's the system. I suppose you can't say anything about it. How'd you like that business about the knife? Did you ever in your life hear such a story? Well, look, you have to expect that. You know what we're dealing with. He bought a switch knife that night. And they claimed he lost it. A hole in his pocket. A hole in his father. Men. An awful way to kill your father. A knife in his chest. Look at the kind of people they are. You know them. All right, ladies, let's get down to business. Right, this better be fast. I've got to start watching that new show, Tiger King, tonight. My husband and I must be the only people in the entire world who haven't seen it yet. Okay, Your Honor, start the show. Uh, what is this Tiger King? Is, is, can you hear me? Is, 
Ah, uh, okay, never mind. Everyone, make sure we can see your faces so we know you're paying attention. Number eight. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, it's, it's hard to figure, isn't it? A boy kills his father big, just like that. Well, I think it's this juvenile delinquency. People let their children run wild. Maybe it serves them right. There's no point in getting emotional about it. This is a question of evidence, not how we feel. But well, we all agreed that it's been a long week. And that our tempers will get short. Not if we disagree. This is open and shut. Let's get it done. All right, now you ladies can handle this any way you want to. I mean, I'm not going to make any rules. If we want to discuss it first and then vote, that's one way. Or we can vote right now to see where we all stand. Let's vote now. Who knows, maybe we can all go to bed. Yeah, right. we'll see who's where. All right, let's vote. All right, let us vote. Anybody doesn't want to vote? That was easy. Okay, all those voting guilty, raise your hands. You want to go down to the bottom of your Zoom screen? You click participants. And then you press the button that says raise hand. You press the button. Oh, everybody got it? I guess, yeah. Let's see, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's 11 for guilty. Okay, not guilty? What's the matter with you? Okay, 11 to 1. 11 guilty, 1 not guilty. Now we know where we stand. Do you really believe that boy's not guilty? I don't know. After six days, she doesn't know. In six days, I could learn calculus. Well, I don't think this is ABC. A, I don't think this is as simple as ABC. I never saw a guilty man in my life. And what exactly does a guilty man look like? He's not guilty until we say he's guilty. I mean, are we to vote on his face? You sat right there in court and heard the same things as I did. The boy's a dangerous killer. You could see it. And where do you look exactly to see if someone is a killer? Oh, well... You know, I would just like to know. Tell me what the facial characteristics of a killer are. Maybe you know something I don't. Look, what is there about this case that makes you believe the boy is innocent? Well, for starters, he's only 19 years old. That's old enough. He knifed his father four inches in the chest. An innocent little nine-year-old murderer. I agree with you that the boy is guilty, but I think we should try to avoid emotionally colored arguments. You're right. They proved it a dozen different ways. Do you want me to list them? No. No. Do you believe that stupid story he told? No, no. Do you believe the boy's story? I, mean, I don't know whether or not I believe it, but... Maybe I don't. Maybe I do. So what'd you vote not guilty for? It's not just simple for me to raise my hand and send a boy off to die without talking about it first. Who says it's easy for me? Or me? <sighs> no one. He's still just as guilty, whether it's an easy vote or a hard one. Is there something wrong because I voted fast? Not necessarily. I think the boy's guilty. You couldn't change my mind if you talked for a hundred years. And I don't want to change your mind. All right, what do you want? Look, I just want to talk for a while. This boy's been kicked around his entire life, living in the slums, his mother dead since he was nine. He's a tough, angry boy. And you know why slum kids get that way? Well, because we kick him in the head every chance we get. Look, all I'm saying is that maybe, 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 we just owe this kid a few words, that's all. All right, life's hard. It was hard for me. Everything we've got, my husband and I fought for. I worked my way through college where I met him, and that was a long time ago. And perhaps you do forget, I fought. Yes, my husband fought, but neither of us ever killed. I know what hard luck's like, but I never killed nobody either. I've been kicked around too. Wait until you're in the ad agency and the guy who buys the advertising out from the place. In my country, in Europe, kicking was a science, but let's try to find something better than that. I don't mind telling you this, sister. We don't owe the boy a thing. 
He got a fair trial, didn't he? Do you know the tr- what the trial costs? He's lucky he got one. Look, we're all grown-ups here. You're not going to tell us that we're supposed to believe him knowing what he is. I lived among them all my life. Can't believe a word they say. I know that. Well, I don't know that. What a terrible thing to believe, since when is dishonesty a group characteristic? You don't have a monopoly on the truth. All right, save it for Sunday. We don't need a sermon. What this woman says is very dangerous. I don't see any need for arguing like this. I think we ought to behave like ladies. Right. So, if you're going to discuss this case, let's discuss the facts. I think that's a good point. We have a job to do, let's, so let's do it. I may have an idea here. I'm just thinking out loud now, but it seems to me that it's up to us to convince a juror number eight here that she's wrong and we're right. Maybe if we talk for a minute or two, you know, try it on for size. That sounds fair enough. Very yeah. fair. Supposing each of us says our piece in order. Okay, let's start it off. Right. Number two, I guess you're first. Oh, well, I just think he's guilty. I thought it was obvious. In what ways was it obvious? I mean that nobody proved otherwise. I mean, no one has to prove otherwise. He's innocent until proven guilty. The burden of the proof is on the prosecution. The defendant doesn't have to open up his mouth. I mean, it it is up to us anyway. It's kind of in the Constitution, the Fifth Amendment. I'm sure you've heard of it. Everyone has. Well, sure, I've heard of it. I know what it is. What I'm trying to say is, what I meant is, well, anyway, I just think he's guilty. Hmm. No reasons at all, huh? Just guilty. A man's life is at stake here. Okay, let's get to the facts. Number one, let's talk about that old man who lives in the apartment right underneath where the murder took place. At 10 minutes after 12 on the night of the murder, he heard loud noises in the upstairs apartment. He said it sounded like the fight. Then he heard the boy say to his father, I'm going to kill you. A second later, he heard a body falling. And running to the door of his apartment, he looked out and saw the boy running down the stairs and out of the apartment. Then he called the police. They found the father with a knife in his chest. And the coroner fixed the time of death at around midnight. Right. Now what else do you want? It just doesn't seem to fit. Boy's whole story is flimsy. He claimed he was at the movies. That's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? He couldn't even remember what picture he saw. That's right. Did you hear that? You're absolutely right. He didn't have any tickets though. Okay, but who keeps a ticket stub at the movies anyway? That's true enough. I suppose, but the cashier didn't remember him. And the ticket taker didn't either. Look, what about the woman across the street? If her testimony don't prove it, then nothing can. Exactly. She saw the killing, didn't she? Ladies, let's go in order. Just a minute. Here's a woman who's lying in bed and can't go to sleep. It's hot, you know. Anyway, she wakes up and she looks out the window and right across the street she sees the boy knife his father. Uh, I mean, but how could she really be sure it was the boy she saw when she saw him through the windows of a passing elevated train? She's known him all his life. His window is right opposite hers across the L tracks. She swore she saw him do it. Uh, I guess I heard her swear to it as well, but... Okay, okay. And they proved in court that you can look through the windows of a passing L train at night and see what's happening on the other side. They proved it. But weren't you just telling us a minute or two ago that we couldn't believe them that we couldn't trust them? So? Then let me ask you something. How come you believe her? She's one of them too, isn't she? You're a pretty smart cookie, aren't you? Now take it easy. Come on, quiet down. What are you letting her get you all upset for? Relax. Ladies, before the stay-at-home order, they did take us out to that woman's room and we looked through the windows of a passing L train, didn't we? Yes, we looked. And weren't you able to see what happened on the other side? Well, I, I didn't see it as well as they told me I would, but I did see what happened on the other side, yes. You see, you do see, don't you? Let's calm down now. Juror 5, it's your turn. I'll pass it. That's your privilege. How about you, 6? Well, I don't know. What convinced me was the testimony of those people across the hall. Didn't they say something about an argument between the father and the boy around seven o'clock that night? I, I mean, I can be wrong. I think it was eight o'clock. That's yeah. 
Yeah, that's right, eight o'clock. The Harrison's father hit the boy twice and then saw the boy walk angrily out of the house. Right. And what does that prove? Well, it doesn't exactly prove anything. It's just a part of the picture. Uh, it doesn't exactly prove anything. I didn't say that. <laughs> anything else? Uh, no. Okay. okay, I don't know. Most of it's been said already. We can talk all day about this thing, but I think we're wasting our time. Well, I don't. And neither do I. Go on. Look at the boy's record. He stole a car. He's been arrested for mugging. I think they said he once stabbed someone in the arm. They did. And he was picked up for knife fighting. At 15, he was in reform school. They sent him to reform school for stabbing someone? Yeah. This is a very fine boy. I mean, ever since he was five years old, his father beat him on a regular. He used his fists. So would I, on a boy like that. Or if I couldn't, I'd see that his father did. Mm -hmm. You're right. The kids nowadays, the way they are, you know, they don't listen. I've got a boy. When he's eight years old, I caught him hanging around with the neighborhood gang, fighting and out on the streets. After I told him to stay away from those cops, he goes and joins them. I gave him a whipping for he wouldn't forget. And you know what? When he was 15 years old, he hit me, a woman, his own mother, in the face. He's big, you know. I haven't seen him in three years. Maybe I'm better off. Rotten kid. You work your heart out. All right, let's get on with it. This boy, let's admit, he's a filth, he's a product of a filthy neighborhood and a broken home. Well, we can't help that, right? We're not here to go into the reasons why slums are breeding grounds for criminals. I know it, so do you. <clears throat> the children who come out of slum neighborhoods are potential menaces to society. You said it there. I don't want any part of them. Believe me. I've lived in a slum all my life. No, oh, wait a minute. I used to play in a backyard that was filled with garbage. Maybe it still smelled on me. Now let's be reasonable. There's nothing personal. There is something personal. Come on now, he didn't mean you. What did she mean? Then? I can understand the sensitivity. Now let's stop bickering, please. We're wasting time. It's your turn, Eight. Look, I've had a peculiar feeling about this case. Somehow I feel like the defense counsel didn't really conduct a thorough cross-examination. Too many questions were still left unasked. Well, it doesn't change my opinion on the guilt of the boy. Still, I agree with you that the defense counsel was bad. So? This is the point. What about the facts? So many questions were still left unasked. How can we ignore that? What about the questions that were answered? For instance, let's talk about that cute little switch knife that fine, upright boy admitted buying. Um, okay, let's talk about it then. Let's get it on the screen. I'd like to take a look at it again, Madam Foreman. We saw the thing once. I don't see why we have to look at it again. Lady has a right to see exhibits and evidence. Okay with me. Well, this knife is a pretty strong piece of evidence. Don't you agree? I do. Now, let's get the sequence of events right as they relate to the switch knife. Okay. All right. The boy admits leaving his house around 8 o'clock after being slapped by his father. Or punched. Or slapped. Or punched. He went to a neighborhood store and he bought a switch knife. The storekeeper was arrested the following day when he admitted selling it to the boy. I think everyone agrees, it's an unusual knife. Pretty hard to forget something like that. The storekeeper identified the knife and said it was the only one of its kind he had in stock. So why did the boy get it? As a present for a friend of his, he says. <laughs> Am I right so far? Right. You bet she's right. Now listen to this lady. She knows what she's talking about. Next, the boy claims that on his way home, the knife must have fallen through a hole in his coat pocket. He says he never saw it again. Now there's a story, ladies. You know what actually happened? The boy took the knife home and a few hours later stabbed his father with it and even remembered to wipe off the fingerprints. 
everyone connected with this case identified the knife. Now, aren't you trying to tell me that, you know, some stranger picked it up off the streets and went to the boy's house and stabbed his father with it just to be amusing? No, I'm saying that it's possible that the boy lost the knife and that someone else knifed his father with a very similar knife. I'm just saying it's possible. Just take a look at that knife. It is a very strange knife. I've never seen one like it before in my life. Neither had the storekeeper who sold it. Aren't you trying to make us accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm not trying to make you accept anything. I'm just saying it's possible. And I'm saying it's not possible. What are you trying to do? Yeah, what is this? Who do you think you are? Look at it. It's the same knife. Quiet. Please, let's be quiet. So, where did you get it? I got it in a little drugstore across the street from the boy's house. Only two bucks? Now listen to me. I'm listening. You pulled a real smart trick here, but you proved absolutely zero. Maybe there are ten knives like that, so what? And maybe there are. The boy lied, and you know it. Mm, and maybe he did lie. And maybe he did lose a knife, and maybe he did go to the movies. And maybe the reason the cashier didn't see the boy was because he snuck into the movies and was just way too ashamed to say so. How many of us can actually honestly say that we didn't sneak into the movies once or twice when we were young? I didn't. Really? Not even once? <laughs> we didn't have movies. Oh. oh. Okay, but maybe he did go to the movies, and maybe he didn't. Maybe he did lie, I don't know. Do you think he lied? No, that's a stupid question. Sure he lied. Okay, there are no stupid questions. Do you think he lied? You don't have to ask me that. You know my answer, he lied. Okay, do you think he lied? I don't know. Now, wait a second, what are you, the boy's a lawyer? Listen, there are 11 of us who still think he's guilty. You're alone. What do you think you're going to accomplish? If you want to be stubborn and hang this jury, he'll be tried again and found guilty. Sure as he's born. You're probably right. So what are you going to do about it? We could be here all night. It's only one night. A man may die. Oh, no, come on. <sighs> well, I, I guess that's true. Sure. I think we gotta get on with it now. Right, let's get going here. How do you like that woman? Well, what do you say? You're the one holding up the show. Obviously, you don't think the boy is guilty. I, I have a doubt in my mind. But you haven't really presented us with anything that makes it possible for us to understand your doubt. There's the old man downstairs. He heard the boy. He heard the boy shriek it out. The woman across the L tracks, she saw it. We know he bought a switch knife that night, and we don't know where he really was. At the movies? Earlier that night, the boy and his father did have a fight. He's been a violent boy all the way, and while that doesn't prove anything... Still, you know... Actually, I've got a proposition to make. I want to call for a vote. How about the 11 of you vote by secret ballot? I'll abstain. And if there are still 11 votes for guilty, I won't, I, I, I won't stand alone. Um, so we'll take in a guilty verdict right now. Okay, let's do it. That sounds fair. Just send me a private message with your verdict. Has everyone agreed? I certainly am. Perhaps this is best. Okay, I've got them all here. Guilty, 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 guilty. Yeah, Please. Six guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Not guilty. So how do you like that?
See, now, is that the way we talk about a man's life? Whose life are we talking about? The life of a dead man or the life of a murderer? I want to know. Who? So do I. Excuse me. This is a secret ballot. We are good on that point, no? If the lady wants it to remain a secret. What do you mean? There are no secrets in here. I know who it was. What's the matter with you? You come in here and vote guilty, then this slip cookie starts tearing your heart out with stories about poor little boys who just couldn't help but become murderers. So you change your vote. If that isn't the most sickening- Now hold it! You know the boy is guilty, but let's be fair. Hold it? Be fair? That's what I'm saying. You're trying to put a guilty man in the chair where he belongs. Now all of a sudden we're paying attention to fairy tales? Now, just a minute. Now you listen to me! Let's try and keep this organized, ladies. This isn't organized. It's Zoom, but let's try to keep it civilized. Please, I would like to say something here. I have always thought that a person was entitled to have popular opinions in this country. I mean, that is the reason I came here. I, I wanted to have the right to disagree. Do you disagree with us? Uh, usually, I would. In this one case, I agree with you. Uh, but the point I wish to make is that, well, in, in my own country, I'm ashamed to say... Oh, no! What? Do we have to listen to the whole history of your country? Always wise to bear in mind what happens in other countries when people aren't allowed to disagree. But we are, so let's stick to the subject. Yes, let's yeah. stick to the subject. Now I want to ask you, what made you change your vote? I want to know too. You haven't told us yet. Why do you think I did change my vote? Because I do. Now get on with it. Nothing for her to tell you. She didn't change her vote. I did. I was going to tell you, but you were just so sure of yourself. Sorry. Okay, now. Maybe you'd like to know why. Let me tell you why that boy's a- The lady wants to talk. Thank you. This lady chose to stand alone against us. That's her right. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone even if you believe in something very strongly. She left the verdict up to us. She gambled for support and I gave it to her. I want to hear more. The vote is 10 to two. That's fine. If the speech is over, let's go on. If there was anything, anything in this boy's favor, I'd vote not guilty. I don't see what is. Neither do I. They're clutching at straws. As guilty as they get, that's the boy, I suppose. It's that one juror that's holding out, but she'll come around eventually. She's got to. And fundamentally, she's a very reasonable person. It's hard, you know. Yes, it is. And what does guilty beyond a reasonable doubt really mean? What's a reasonable doubt? Exactly. What is a reasonable doubt when a life is at stake? You've got to have law and order. You've got to draw the line somewhere, you know? Or everybody would start kniving people. Not much doubt here. Two women think so. I wonder why. I really, really wonder why. You do hear stories, though, about innocent men who have gone to jail or death sometimes. Then later, things turn up. And on the other hand, some killers get turned loose and they go and do it again. They squeeze out on some technicality and kill again. Oh, fun. Now that we've cooled off, uh, well, I was a little excited a minute ago. Well, you know how it is. Uh, didn't mean to get nasty. Nothing personal. Think nothing of it. Look, supposing you answer me this. If the boy didn't kill him, who did? As far as I know, we're not concerned with anyone else's motives here. We're just here to figure out whether, whether or not the boy on trial is guilty. Well, remember, it's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. This is an important thing to remember. Everyone's a lawyer. But suppose you explain to us what your reasonable doubts are. This is not easy. So far, it's only a feeling I have. A feeling. Perhaps you don't understand. No, I don't. A feeling? What are we going to do? Spend the night talking about our feelings? What about the facts? These are the words right out of my mouth. Look, 
the old man heard the boy yell, I'm going to kill you. Then after that, he saw the boy run down the stairs and out of the house 15 seconds after that. Where is the reasonable doubt in that? That's right. And let's not forget the woman across the street. She looked out into the open window and she saw the boy stab his father. She saw it. Now that's not enough for you. Not enough for me. It is enough for you. I'd like to know. How do you like her? It's like talking into a dead phone. The woman saw the killing through the windows of a moving elevated train. The train had five cars and she saw the killing through the last two windows. But she remembers the most insignificant details. Well, what do you have to say about that? I don't know. It just, it still doesn't fit. Something doesn't sound right. Well, suppose you think about it. Want to see a pattern for a knitted skirt my daughter sent me? Yeah. Uh, excuse me, miss, miss, please stop. This is wildly unprofessional. Wouldn't it be out of style by the time you got it done? This isn't a sewing circle. Now, wait a minute. This is a man's life. Who do you think you are? All right, let's take it easy. I've got a good mind to drive over to her house and break social distancing. No, please. I don't want any fights in here. Did you see her? The nerve. The absolute nerve. All right. Forget it. It don't mean anything. Yeah, how about sitting down, please? Thank you. Is in a sewing circle? Who does she think she is? God, weren't we just talking about elevated trains? Yes. Yes, we were. So, continue, please. Okay. How long would you guys say it takes an elevated train going at top speed to pass the given point? I, I wouldn't have the slightest idea. Neither would I. Nobody mentioned it. Okay, what do you think? I don't know. I'd say mm, maybe 10 to 12 seconds was a good guess. Anyone else? I would think about 10 seconds, perhaps. Uh, about 10 seconds, yes. Uh, all right, we're agreed. 10 seconds. What are you getting at? This. An L train passes a given point in 10 seconds. This given point would have been the window in which the killing took place, right? You can almost reach outside of the window and touch the L, right? That's right. I tried it. All right, so let me ask you this. Did anyone else here live near the L? I live next to them. And they make a lot of noise, don't they? I live right near the L tracks. When the window is open and the train goes by, the noise is almost unbearable. You can barely hear yourself think. You can't hear yourself think? Get to the point. Okay, the old man who lived downstairs heard the boy say something of the- He screamed it. Okay, the old man heard the boy scream. I'm going to kill you. And two seconds later, he heard the body fall. Two seconds. That's the testimony, right? Right. The woman across the street looked outside of the window at the last two cars of the L train and saw the body fall, right? Right. The last two cars. The last two cars. What are you giving us here? This. An L train takes 10 seconds to pass a given point, or two seconds per car, but the L had been going by the old man's house for at least six seconds or more before the body fell. Well, at least that was according to the woman. The old man would have had heard the boy say, I'm gonna kill you. While the L was roaring past his nose, it's impossible that he could have heard that. What do you mean? Sure he could have heard it. But with an L train going by? He said the boy yelled it out. I mean, an L train makes a lot more noise than that. It's enough for me. It's enough for me, too. I don't think he could have heard it. Maybe the old man didn't hear it. I mean, with the L noise. What are you people talking about? Are you calling the old man a liar? Something just doesn't fit. Well, it stands to reason. You're crazy. Why would he lie? What's he got to gain? Attention, maybe? You keep coming up with these bright sayings. Why don't you send one to the newspaper? They pay two dollars. Okay, now what does that have to do with a man's life? Why might the old man have lied? You have a right to be heard. Go on. Um, it's just that I looked at him for a very long time. 
The seam of his jacket was split under his arm. Did you notice that? Um, he was a very old man with a torn jacket, and he carried two canes. I think I know him better than anyone else here. This is a quiet, frightened, insignificant old man who's been nothing all his life, who's n never had any, any recognition, his name in the newspapers. Nobody knows him after 75 years. This is a very sad thing. A man like this deserves to be questioned, to be listened to, to be quoted just once. This is very important. So you're telling me the old man lied about something like j this just so he could be important? Well, no, he wouldn't really lie, but perhaps he'd made himself believe he heard those words and recognized the boy's face. Well, that's the most fantastic story I ever heard. How can you make up a thing like that? I'm not making it up. You must be making it up. People don't lie about a thing like that. He made himself believe he told the truth. What do you know about it? I speak from experience. All right, is there anything else? I'm gonna go grab some hot chocolate, if that's all right with everyone. Uh, no, please, actually, stay for a while. Thank you. I, I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to. Come on, we have to get on with it. But there's something else I'd like to point out here. I think we already proved that the old man couldn't have heard the boy say, I'm gonna kill you! But <laughs> well, I disagree. Supposing the old man really did hear the boy say, I'm gonna kill you! This phrase. How many times have we actually said it through our daily, daily lives? Probably hundreds. If you do that once more, Junior, I'm gonna kill you! Or your husband yells, come on, Rocky, kill him! We say it so many times, but we don't actually mean we're gonna kill someone. Uh, don't the circumstances alter that somewhat? The old man was freaking murdered, guys. One more thing. The phrase was, I'm gonna kill you. And the boy screamed it out at the top of his lungs. That's the way I understand it. Now, don't try and tell me he didn't mean it. Anybody says a thing like that in the way he says it, they mean it. And how they mean it. Well, let me ask you this. Do you really think the boy would yell out a thing like that in the neighborhood so everyone could hear him? I don't, I don't think so. He's much too bright for that. Bright? He's a common ignorant slob. He don't even speak good English. Uh, he doesn't, doesn't <laughs> even speak good English. Yeah, the boy's clever enough. I'd like to change my vote to not guilty. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. The vote is nine to three in favor of guilty. I'd like to know why you changed your vote. I think there's a doubt. Where? Where's the doubt? There's the knife. Oh, fine. She, she talked into believing a fairy tale. You know what? Just, just go on, please. Just give us the reasons. Okay. Um, the old man, too. Maybe he didn't lie, but then just maybe he did. Maybe he didn't like the boy. Well, if that isn't the end. I believe there's reasonable doubt. What are you basing it on? Stories that this woman made up? You know, she ought to write for Amazing Detective Monthly. She'd make a fortune. Listen, boy had a lawyer, didn't he? Why didn't the lawyer make up all these points? Lawyers can't think of everything. Oh, heavens. You sit in here and you pull stories out of thin air. Now we're supposed to believe that the old man didn't get out of bed, run to the door, and see the old the boy running downstairs 15 seconds after the killing? It's the testimony, I believe. And the old man swore to this. Yes, he swore to this. Only so he could be important. Did the old man say he ran to the door? Ran, walked. What's the difference? He got there. I don't remember what he said. I just don't see how he could run. He said went. I remember now. Um, he went from his bedroom to the front door. That's enough, isn't it? Where was his bedroom again? Down the hall somewhere. <laughs> down the hall somewhere. <clears throat> and we're supposed to send a man off to die because it's down the hall somewhere? Come on. I thought you remembered everything. Don't you remember that? No, I, I don't. I don't remember either. Madam Foreman, I'd like to take a look at the diagram of the apartment, please. Why don't we have them run the trial over just so you can get everything straight? Look, 
the bedroom is down the hall somewhere. Do you know exactly where it is? Please, a boy's life is at stake here. Do you know? Well, uh... Exactly. Um, Madam Foreman. I heard you. Just notifying the guard to help us. All right, what's this one for? How come you're the only one in the room that wants to see exhibits all the time? I want to see this one, too. So do I. And I want to stop wasting time. Alright, are we going to start waiting through all that nonsense about where the body was found? No, nope, we're not. We're going to figure out how a man who's had two strokes in the past three years and walked with a pair of canes could have possibly gotten from his front door, from his bedroom, in 15 seconds. He said 20 seconds. He said 15. How does he know how long 15 seconds is? You can't judge that kind of thing. He said 15. He was very positive about it. He's an old man. You saw that. Half the time he was confused. How could he be positive about anything? Oh, well, uh, you know. No, I don't know. Maybe you know. This what you want. Give me a second. Let me put it up. Aww. Uh... Did it work? I can't really see. You might have to straighten your camera out. Is that good? Uh, maybe you can block it. Yeah. Oh, do I, number eight, could you like share the screen? Because then, like, because this is a good idea, you can write on it and like circle. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. How do you do that? There's a little button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Okay, it's give me a second. Just uh, bear with me. I don't really know how to do this stuff. Isn't this your job? Hey, get off my back. You're not my wife. Do me a favor. Wake me up when this is over. I've looked at that diagram for two hours. Enough is enough. All right. You know, just some of us are interested. Go ahead, Aid. All right. This is the apartment in which the killing took place. The old man's apartment is directly the same, but here are the old tracks. Here we have a bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, and this, my friends, this is the hall. Here's the front door of the apartment. Here are the steps right here. Now, the old man was in his bed in his room. He says he got up, went through this hall right here, opened it, and looked out just in enough time to see the boy racing down the stairs. Am I right? That's the story. That's what happened. All right, but he said he did it 15 seconds after the body fell. Correct. His bed was at the window here. It is 12 feet from his bed to the bedroom door. The length of the hall is 43 feet, six inches. He had to have gotten out of his bed, gotten his canes, walked 12 feet, opened the front door, walked 43 feet and six inches, and opened the door all in 15 seconds. Do you think that's possible? You know it's possible. I don't see why not. He can only walk very slowly. They had to help him into the witness chair. You make it sound like it's a long walk. It's not. For an old man who uses canes, it's a long walk. <laughs> what are you doing? I, I just want to try this thing. Let's see how long it actually took him. I'm going to pace off 12 feet, the length of his bedroom. You're crazy. You can't recreate a thing like that. Perhaps if we could see it, I mean, this is an important point. It's a ridiculous waste of time. Just let her do it. I don't see any harm in it. Foolish, but go ahead. All right. Now, this is the bedroom door. How far would you say it is from here to the door of his room? Uh, this is about 20 feet, I'd say. How are you sure? Uh, maybe we should measure it. Uh, okay, you're absolutely right. 20 feet on the dot. All right. From here to the front door of his bedroom is about 43 feet. I'm, I'm sorry, correct me. Um, it's about from here to the door of his apartment is about 43 feet, six inches. It's shorter from the length of the hall the old man had to move through, wouldn't you say? Um, a few feet, maybe. 
Okay. Look, this is absolutely insane. What makes you think we can do this? We can't stop her. I mean, do you mind if I try it? According to you, it'll only take 15 seconds, and we, I'm sure we have that to spare. Does anyone else have a watch with a second hand? Uh, I can use my Google timer, if that works. Well, that's perfect. When you want me to start, just say go on, and that'll represent the body falling. We'll time you from there. All right, let's say he keeps his cane at his right bedside, correct? Right. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, I'm just waiting for the seconds to get to 60. Okay, go. Speed it up. He walked twice as fast as that. But this is, I think, even more quickly than the old man walked into the guard's room. No, okay. it isn't. If you think I should go faster, I will. Maybe speed it up a little. All right, stop. Uh, 39 seconds exactly. That can't be. 39 seconds. Now that is interesting. Say now, you know. What do you think of that? 39 seconds. 39. Mm. And the old man swore on his oath that it was 15. Yeah, he may have been a little bit off with the speed of the old man moved up, but I mean, 24, 24 mm -hmm. seconds off? Well, now, you know. Far be it for me to call anyone a liar, a liar, but even allowing for quite a difference in between in speed between you and the old man, why there's still quite a big discrepancy. That's my guess. That the old man was trying to get to his door, heard someone racing down the stairs, and just assumed it was the boy. I I think that's possible. Assumed? Now listen to me, everyone. I've seen all kinds of dishonesty in my day, but this little display, it takes the cake. And what dishonesty are you talking about this time? Tell her. You come in here with your heart bleeding all over the floor about slums and injustice, and you make up these wild stories, and you got a couple of soft-hearted sausages listening to you. Well, I'm not. I'm sick of it all. What's the matter with you? This boy is guilty. He's got us to burn. We're letting him slip through our fingers. Our fingers? Are you his executioner? I'm one of them. And I'm perhaps you'd like to pull the switch. For this good for nothing, you bet I'll pull that switch. I'm so sorry for you. Don't even start with me. What it must feel like to want to pull the switch. Get up! You're a sadist. Get up! You only want to see this boy die because it would per personally benefit you. You disgust me. Is there anything wrong, ladies? No, there's nothing wrong. You can... Why is everyone so quiet? I just, I don't see why we have to all behave like children. Just... No, do I. We have a responsibility here. Yeah, we do. This is a, re a remarkable thing about democracy, that we are, <sighs> what, what is the word? The notified that we are notified by the email to come to this Zoom, the Zoom, and decide on the guilt or innocence of a man or a woman that we have not known before. I mean, we had nothing to gain or lose by our verdict. This is one of the reasons why we are strong, and we should not make it a personal thing. Thank you very much. Why do you thank me? We forget. It's good to be reminded. I'm glad we're going to be civilized about this. Well, we're still nowhere. No, we're somewhere. We're um, getting there, maybe. Maybe. He's got an idea. Well, I think maybe we should try another vote. Madam Foreman? It's all right with me. Anybody doesn't want to vote? Let's vote. Yes, vote. All right, let's do it. I want an open ballot. I want to know who stands where. That sounds fair. Anyone object? All right. 
I'll call off your jury numbers. I vote guilty. Number two? Not guilty. Three? Guilty. Four? Guilty. Five? Not guilty. Six? Not guilty. Seven? Guilty. Eight? Not guilty. Nine? Not guilty. Ten? Guilty. Eleven? Not guilty. Twelve? Guilty. Uh, six to six. I'll tell you something. The crime is being committed right in this Zoom. The vote is six to six. I'm ready to invite the judge into the Zoom right now and declare hung jury. There's no point in this going on anymore. I, I would like to know why you changed your mind and why you changed your mind and why you did. There are six women here that think we may be turning a murderer loose on the streets. A murderer. Emotion won't do. So why? Well, it would seem that the old man didn't see the boy run downstairs. I don't think it likely that the old man heard someone scream, I'm going to kill you, old men dream. And if the boy did scream that he was going to kill, then we have the authority of this person to prove that it might not really mean he's going to kill. Okay, why don't we invite the judge to the Zoom and let the boy take his chances with 12 other jurors? Six to six. I don't think we'll ever agree on anything. It's got to be unanimous, and we're never going to convince her. Well, at first I was alone. Now five others agree. There is a doubt. You can't ever convince me that there's a doubt, because I know there isn't a doubt. I tell you what, maybe we are a hung jury. No. It happens sometimes. No, we are not going to be a hung jury. But we are right now a perfect balance. Let's invite the judge. See, if there is a reasonable doubt, I, I just, I can't see it. The doubt is there, in my mind. Maybe we should vote. What do you mean, vote? Not again. I still want to know. Vote on what? Are we, or aren't we, a hung jury? You, you mean, yes, we are a hung jury, or no, that we're not a hung jury? That's just what I was thinking of. I, I'm not sure we could agree on whether or whether or not we are a hung jury. Then let's make it a majority vote. The majority wins. All right, if seven or more of us vote yes, then we are a hung jury. Then we'll invite the judge in and tell him that we are a hung jury. Right, and if seven or more of us vote no, that means we aren't a hung jury and we go on discussing it. It just doesn't seem quite right to me. It's the only solution. I agree, it's the only way. Something done this. Are we agreed then, seven or more votes yes, and we invite the judge. Let's call our votes out. Okay. I vote yes, we are a hung jury. Two? No. Three? Yes. Four? Yes. Five? No. Six? No. Seven? Yes. Eight? No. Nine? No. Ten? Yes. Eleven? No. Twelve? Sorry, my husband's on a conference call right now. Just tell me if yeah. you vote yes or no. Yes. Oh no. It's six to six. We can't even get a majority to decide whether or not we're a hung jury. Right. I, I went along with the majority vote on this question, and I clearly didn't agree with voting that way, not really, and I still don't. So I'm changing my vote. I say no, we are not a hung jury. I believe that the boy is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but there are still some things that I want to find out from those who changed their mind. And we aren't a hung jury, so we go on. Good, we go on. So why did you change your mind? Well. She, she seems so sure, and she has made a number of good points. Well, she only gets mad and insults everybody. Does the anger and the insult change the guilt of the boy, though? He did do it. Are you trying to turn a murderer loose? 
because one of the jurors becomes angry when she thinks a murderer is being turned loose. That's true. There is a doubt. No, I don't think so. The track is straight in front of the window. Let's take that point. So the L train would have made a low rumbling noise. L trains screech when they go around curves. So the old man could have heard a scream, which is high pitched. And it is a tenement, which has thin walls. Good, good. That, that's it, that's it. And what if the old man was wrong about the time it took him to get to the door, but right about who he saw? Please remember that there weren't any fingerprints on the knife. And it's summer, so gloves really seem unlikely. Now I want you to listen to this lady. She's talking sense. And it may have taken a few more seconds to get the handkerchief out and wipe the fingerprints away. Uh, I, this, is, this is the point. Why don't we time this one to see? What are we timing? Uh, yes, let's be exact, please. All right. I'm saying that the old man downstairs may have been wrong about how long it took him to get to the door, but right about who he saw running down the stairs. Now, it may have taken the murderer um, about 35 seconds to wipe away the fingerprints and get down the stairs to the place the old man saw him. The boy, that is. This is right. We reconstructed the old man getting out of bed and going to the door, and we timed that. So now, let's reconstruct the actual crime. As well as it can reconstruct it. You know, I think a murderer could use up 30 or 40 seconds pretty easily at that point. All right, yes, let's reconstruct the killing. Yes, let's. Someone recreate the stabbing so we can visualize it. All right, okay, I'll do it. Um, can you guys see me like this? We can see it. Yes. I think you see the dummy. Don't forget the dummy takes one mm -hmm. second to fall. All right, um, and the spell on his right side, so I'll make sure to make it fall on its, roll onto its right side. If someone hates another person enough to kill them, don't you think they would, you know, look at his victim for at least a second or two? Sure. Try to force yourself from the situation in this particular case. Just use human nature. I mean, yes, it seems reasonable. Sure. Hey, wait a minute. The father falls and ends up on his right side, but stabbing someone isn't like shooting them, even if it's right in the heart. He would have worked around for a few seconds, lying there, writhing, maybe? That's quite possible. I think there would have been enough oxygen in his system to carry him for about two or three seconds. Uh, well, wouldn't the father have cried out? Maybe the boy covered his mouth. Uh, that also seems possible. Also, there's another point we might bring out. Anyone who is clear enough mentally to wipe away the fingerprints after murdering someone is also clear enough mentally to look around the apartment or room in this case, just to see if there are any other clues. It would just be for a second or two, but I still think you should look around. This gets better and better. All right, so we're trying to make it clear. One does not talk about quality when murder is involved. Well, let's do it. About this on the fingerprints. The boy wiped the fingerprints off the knife. Well, what about the doorknob? If I saw a man coming into my home, a man that hated me, and if he was wiping the doorknob with a handkerchief, I'd start screaming. <laughs> I think even an old, well, a man would have an uneasy feeling. So the doorknobs must have been wiped after the killing, and this too would take some time. Two, you time the last one. Why don't you time this one as well? All right. All right, just uh, call up go when you want me to start. Or stop. Right. Okay. Stop. Yeah. I want the seconds to be at 60. All right. Okay, go. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to wipe both knobs. Um, stop. 29 and a half seconds, I'd say. And whoever did murder the old man, and I still think it was a boy, still had to run down the hall and down the stairs, at least one flight of stairs. You see? You see? So the old man downstairs may have been wrong about the time, but in view of this, I think it's quite reasonable to assume that he did see the boy run downstairs. So now both time sequences check. The one you did and the one we did. What with running downstairs and everything? It does pretty much check out on time. Sure, he's an old man who wants attention. She's probably right. But the old man feels the way everyone does. 
A life is at stake. So the story of the old man may very well be true. Well, except for the fact that he absolutely swore under oath that it only took him 15 seconds. We seem to all agree that it was 25 to 35 seconds later. And you are now admitting that the old man lied in one case and told the truth in another? Okay, I, I do admit that this does tend to confirm the old man's story, but in part, he is now a proven liar, and this is now by your own admission. That may be true, that the old man lies in part, but I think it will change my vote once more. Guilty. What about you? What do you think? I'm not just sure what I think. I, I want to talk some more. At first I thought guilty, then I changed. Now I'm sort of swinging back to guilty. And what about you? No, I am in real doubt now. Real doubt. I say guilty. I was right the first time. Now we're beginning to make sense here. It seems to be about nine guilty to three not guilty. But there's one more question about the old man downstairs. How many of us lived in apartment buildings? Raise your hand on Zoom, please. I don't know what you're thinking, but I know what I'm thinking. What's that? Uh, I did not live in a tenement, but it is close, and there's just enough light in the hall so you can see the steps, no more. The mm -hmm. light bulbs are so small. And this murder took place in a tenement. Remember how we stumbled on the steps? Yeah, and the police officers were using these big bulbs, and one even had a flashlight, remember? An old man who misjudged the time by 20 seconds. On this, we all agree. This old man looked down the dark hallway of a tenement and recognized a running figure. And he was 100% wrong about the time that he thought it took him originally. It took him twice as long. Then could not the old man be 100% wrong about who he saw? That's the most stupidest thing I ever heard. You're making that up out of thin air. Guys, we're hung jury. Let's just be honest about it. Do you truly feel that there is no room for reasonable doubt? Yes, I do. I beg your pardon, but maybe you don't understand the term reasonable doubt. What do you think you want to talk to me like that? What do you mean I don't understand it? Well, how do you like this, babe? She comes over here running for her life, and before she can even take a big breath, she's telling us how to run our lives. The nerve of her. No one here is asking where you came from. I was born right here. Or where your mother came from. A few tips from people who come running here. Maybe they learn something we don't know. We're not so perfect. Please, I'm used to this. It's all right, thank you. It's not all right. Okay, okay. I apologize. Is that what you want? Yeah, thank you. That's exactly what I wanted. All right, let's stop the arguing. Who's got something constructive to say? Oh, um, well, Something's been bothering me a little. This whole business about the stab wound and how it was made. The downward angle of it, you know? Don't tell me we're going to start on that. They went over and over again in court. I know they did, but I don't go along with it. The boy is 5 feet 8 inches tall. His father was 6 feet 2 inches tall. That is a difference of 6 inches. I imagine it's a very awkward thing to stab downward into the chest of someone who is a half a foot taller than you are. Look, you're not going to be satisfied until you see it again. I'm going to give a little demonstration. I'll be right back. I'm just going to go grab my daughter. Demonstration? Go again. This is simply unnecessary. Is she going to stab her daughter? Oh my god. I don't think she would do that. I mean, I, I wouldn't really be surprised. Uh, I don't know. I, I have a bad feeling about this one. That's right. Mm, I... <sighs> it's just a long day. It's much longer. Oh, well, oh, here we go. All right, everyone, this is my daughter. Hello. Hello there. Is that about six inches? I would say that's six inches. I know. I'm in advertising. I'm going to kill you! Huh? Look out! That is not funny. Are they? Are they? What's the matter with you? 
No, nobody's hurt. I don't think. No, she's fine. It's not funny. See, down and in. That's how I'd kill a taller person in the chest, and that's how it was done. Down and in, I guess there's no argument. Did you ever stab someone? Of course not. Mm, so, did you three? Let's not be silly. Did you? No. And so, uh, where did you get all this information about how someone's stabbed? It's just common sense. Well, have you ever seen a person stabbed? No. All right, so let me ask you something. The boy was an experienced knife fighter. He was even sent to reform school for knifing someone. Isn't that so? Well, look at this. Doesn't it seem like an awkward way to hold a knife? What are you asking me for? Wait a minute. What's the matter with me? Let me show you. Have you ever seen a knife fight? Yes, I have. In the movies, I suppose. No, actually. In my backyard and on my stoop, uh, in the vacant lot across the street, too many of them. Switch knives came with the neighborhood where I lived. It's funny I didn't think of it before. I guess you just try to forget those things. Anyways, anyone who's ever used a switch knife would have never stabbed downward. You don't handle a switch knife that way. You'd use it underhand. Then he couldn't have made the kind of wound that killed his father then. I suppose it's conceivable that he could have made the wound, but it's not likely. Not if he'd ever had any experience with switch knives, and we all know that the boy had lots of experience with them. I don't believe it. Neither do I. You're giving us a lot of mumbo jumbo. And what do you think? Well, I don't really know. <laughs> what about you? Listen, I'll tell you all something. I'm a little sick of this whole thing already. We're getting nowhere fast. Let's stop all this arguing and go watch Tiger King. But before we decide anything, I'd like to pull this thing together. This should be good. She has a right. Let her go ahead. Thank you. Uh, do you want me to time this too? Let's hear her. Okay. I'm in advertising. I love to see things pulled together. It makes for good layouts. Let's try to look at the whole picture to see if there's some pattern here. Maybe if we could try getting a fresh point of view. Yeah, I, I want you all to look at this very logically and consistently. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, guilty. But, hmm, okay. I want to know. Is this boy smart or is he dumb? What do you mean? This is a boy who's gone to perform school for knife fighting. Mm -hmm. The night of the murder, he bought a knife, a switch knife, right? Mm -hmm. It would have been taking a very stupid boy to go and murder a man, his father, with an instrument that everyone would associate with the sun. I quite agree. He's dumb. However, if he were dumb, then why did he make the kind of wound that would an unexperienced knife fighter make? I'm not sure I understand. To murder someone must take great emotion, great hatred, and at that moment he would handle the knife as best as he could, and a trained knife fighter would handle it as he had been trained. Underhand. A man who had not been trained would go over, right? But the boy is very smart. Everyone knows that he's an experienced knife fighter, so he is smart enough at that moment to make the wound that an amateur would make. That boy is a smart one. Smart enough to wipe away the finger fingerprints, perhaps even smart enough to wait until the L train goes by in order to cover the noise. Now, I ask you again, is this boy smart or is he dumb? Hey, now, wait a minute. Well, the woman across the L track saw the murder through the L train. So someone on the L train could have seen the murder as well. Possibility, but no one that we know of, right? It would have taken an awfully dumb man to take that chance doing the murder as the train went by. Exactly. A dumb, very stupid man swept by emotion. But probably he heard nothing. I don't know. He probably didn't even hear the train coming. But whoever did murder the father did as well as he could. So... Uh, the boy is dumb enough to do everything to associate himself with the switch knife. A switch knife to murder. And then a moment after, he becomes smart. The boy is smart enough to even make the kind of wound that would lead us to suspect someone else. And yet, yet at the very same instant, he's dumb enough to, to do the killing as the train roars by. And then, a and then a moment later, he's smart enough to wipe the fingerprints away. To make this boy guilty, you would have to say he is dumb from 8 to midnight. And then... And then uh, 
I guess at about midnight, he is smart again. And then stupid, a few seconds later, he's dumb again and then smart. And then he becomes stupid. So stupid that he does not think of a good alibi. Now, is this boy smart or is he dumb? And to say that he is guilty, you would have to toss his, in his intelligence like a pancake. There is doubt. Doubt, doubt, doubt. I haven't thought of that. And the old man downstairs on the stand, he swore it was only 15 seconds. He insisted on 15 seconds. But we all agree that it must have been about almost 40. Does the old man lie half the time and tell the truth the other half the time? And for the boy to be guilty, he must be stupid and smart and stupid and smart and so on and so on. And also for the boy to be guilty, the old man downstairs must be a liar half the time and a truth teller the next. You can reasonably see this doubt. I'm sold on reasonable doubt. I think I am too. I wanted more talk and now I've had it. I want another vote. Okay, there's another vote called for. I guess the quickest way is a show of hands. Anybody object? No? All right. All those voting not guilty, physically raise your hand. Okay, nine. All those voting guilty? Three. The vote is nine to three in favor of acquittal. How can you believe this boy is innocent? Look, you know how those people lie. I don't have to tell you. They don't know what the truth is. And let me tell you, they don't need any real big reason to kill someone either. You know, they get drunk and they get drunk and bang, someone's lying in the gutter. Nobody's blaming them. It's just how they are. Uh, you know what I mean? Violent. Human life don't mean as much to them as it does to us. Hey, what's going on here? Look, these people are drinking and fighting all the time, and if somebody gets killed, so somebody gets killed. That's just how they are. They don't care. Oh, sure, there's some good things about them. Look, I'm the first to say that. I've known a few who are pretty decent, but that's the exception. It's like most of them, it's like they have no feelings. They can do anything. What's going on here? I'm, I'm speaking my piece and you, you listen to me. They're no good. There's not a one of them who's any good. We better watch out. Take it from me. This boy on trial. Well, don't you know about them? Listen to me. What are you doing? I'm trying to tell you something. Enough. If you open your mouth again, I am going to disconnect, come to your house and force you to break social distancing. I'm only trying to tell you. Order, everybody. All right, I still believe the boy is guilty of murder. I'll tell you why. To me, the most damning evidence was given by the woman across the street who claimed she actually saw the murder committed. That's right. As far as I'm concerned, that's the most important testimony. All right, then let's go over her testimony then. What exactly did she say? I believe I can recount it accurately. She said she went to bed at around 11 o'clock at night. Her bed was next to the open window and she could look out just well, lying down, you know, and see directly into the window across the street. She tossed and turned for over an hour, unable to fall asleep. Finally, she turned toward her window at around 12.10, and as she looked out, she saw the boy stab his father. As far as I can see, this is an unshakable testimony. That's what I mean. That's the whole case. Frankly, in view of this, I don't see how you could vote for acquittal. What do you think about it? Well, Maybe there's just too much evidence to sift. What do you mean, maybe? She's absolutely right. You can throw all evidence out. That was my feeling. I don't deny the validity of the points that she's made. Shall we say that on one side of the tracks, there is doubt. But what can you say about the story of the woman? She saw it. Uh, what time is it? Uh, it's 10 minutes of 6 o'clock. You don't suppose they'd let us sleep and finish this in the morning? My little girl has some symptoms of corona, and I'm really starting to get a little worried. Not a chance. Can't you see the clock without your glasses? Uh, not clearly. Oh. You know, glasses are a nuisance, aren't they? Well, what do you all do when you wake up in the middle of the night and you want to know what the time is? 
I put on my glasses mm -hmm. and I look at the clock. I just lie in bed and look for the clock to chime. My father gave it to me and we were married, and my husband and I, that is. It was 10 years before we found, found a place to put it. Okay, well, do you wear your glasses to bed? Of course not. No one wears glasses to bed. But the woman who testified that she saw the killing, she wore glasses. What about her? Did she wear glasses? Of course, the women wore bifocals. I remember this very clearly, and they looked quite strong. Right, bifocals. She never took them off. Funny. I never thought of that. And I think it's logical to say that she was not wearing her glasses in bed, and I don't think she would put them on casually to just look out of the window. She testified that the murder took place the instant she looked out and the lights were out a split second later. She couldn't have had time to put her glasses on. But now, perhaps this woman honestly thought she saw the boy kill his father. I mean, I say she was only seeing a blur. How do you know what she saw? Maybe she's far-sighted. How does she know all these things? Does anyone still think there is not a reasonable doubt? I will always wonder. But, but there is a reasonable doubt. I think he's guilty. Does anyone else? No, I'm convinced now. There is a reasonable doubt. And you're alone. 11 votes not guilty. One guilty. I don't care whether I'm alone or not. I have a right. Yes, you do. You do have a right. Sure. Well, I told you. I think the boy's guilty. What else do you want? Your arguments. I gave you my argument. Well, we're still not convinced. We're waiting to hear them again. We have time. Listen, what's the matter with you? You're the only one who came up with all the arguments. You can't leave me. A guilty man is gonna be walking in the streets. A murderer. He's got to die. Stay with me. I'm sorry. I'm convinced. I don't think I'm wrong very often, but I guess I was this once. There is a reasonable doubt in my mind. We're waiting. You're not gonna sway me. I'm entitled to my opinion. It's gonna be a home jury. I guess there's nothing we can do about that except hope that one night, maybe in a few months, why we might be able to get some sleep. You're all alone. It takes a great deal of courage to stand alone. If it is a hung jury, there will be another trial, and some of us will point these things out to various lawyers. They're waiting. Not guilty. Not guilty.